All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're still working on the LT1. We are going to use the Unified Diagnostic Services, UDS protocol, to track down our PIDs. Once we have our PID function and we understand how to navigate through it, we will be able to locate variables within the ECU, linearization maps, and then eventually DTC thresholds where then we can start naming DTC functions and track it to its truth table. Um, and then we'll be able to use both DTCs and SAE PIDs to continue reverse engineering the ECU. So we're going to jump in where the last video stopped. Um, I did do a little bit of exploring um, just to make sure that this video is going to be nice and cohesive. So UDS is a unified diagnostic services. Um, it is a standardized communication protocol that's defined by the ISO 14229 standard. UDS mode 27 is a security mode. So if you have a tester tool hooked up to your ECU, some of the things that your tester may do might be protected by the security of the ECU. In order to pass the security, the tester tool is going to send some data to the ECU and it's going to send a mode 27. You'll be able to see that byte if you're sniffing the bust. You'll be able to locate, you know, OX27 or whatever. And then the ECU will respond with a seed key. The diagnostic tool will then send back a pass key. And from there, the access will be granted if the pass key is correct. That is all just to say that Pretty much all new ECUs are going to have UDS identifier 27 in the binary somewhere. So that's how we are going to find this. So we are going to search 27000000. This will return us good results, but in some cases, if your ECU has other bytes around this 27, you will have to, you know, shrink your search and do a lot more digging to find what you're looking for. So here's our results. Okay, that is not it. This is not it. I don't like these bytes right here with it. Okay, you'll notice that we do have some ascending 25, 26, 27. If this is an, it is in an array. So if you're having a hard time, you know, you know, I would, I would probably search around some more, but I would note these as things that come back to, and you might spend some time reverse engineering these functions because it might be pulling these bytes into a function as an identification of your UDS mode. But the, that's not it in this ECU, so we're gonna keep moving. I don't care for that at all. Okay, this would this would be really promising right here. I would stop and spend I'd probably still search through and find all my options before I spend a bunch of time reverse engineering, but this does look like an array. You know, you could have these UDS identifiers and then here's a function that it's calling directly after. That's exactly what we're looking for. So, a guy would sink a bit of time into reversing these functions and also the function that's calling this array of pointers. This is not, this might be a variant of it, but it's not what we are looking for in this video. And here we have the same thing again. Also really promising. This is the one that we're gonna land on, this last one here, but that's not to say that these couldn't get us the same results. But we're gonna go ahead and scroll up to right here and down to right here. And we're gonna hit C to clear all bytes and we're gonna hit P to create pointers. Okay, these are not pointers. It's just a nice way of organizing these bytes. Uh, it's lazy, I'm okay with it. <clears throat> so this is our UDS mode 27. I'm not too interested in figuring out how to get seed and pass keys right now is what I am looking for is PIDs. So UDS protocol mode 22 or identifier 22 is how 
you access um, read by uh, read data by identifier, and that is going to be our our PIDs. So we're going to open up this function and start doing some poking around. I have not been in this ECU's function, but I I have reversed an E forty one ECU, um, and these were our pointers right here. Okay, so this one is our SAE and manufacturer specific PID truth table is what I am calling it. Where it stops is hard to know. Probably right here. It could be stopping at those other interrupts and we're gonna make a, uh, a double word or sorry, a word out of it. Okay. And we are going to call this PID byte truth table. Okay. Okay. So then let's click on this one here and we have an array of pointers and you'll notice that it actually comes directly after that table that we just met, uh, made. So that's nice and organized, makes sense. On the other controller, this was our PID pointer array. Okay, and you'll notice the way this function is working, and we're not going to get too deep into this, but we see this uvar7 is offsetting from this address. So if uvar7 equals 3, then it's this pointer plus 3. Okay, and it's it's uvar7 for both of them. So however far we offset from the pointer of our truth table is how far we're gonna offset from the pointer of our array table. All right, so we do have some PIDs right here. These are SAE. So these are the bytes that are called and the expected parameter that we're gonna return. Okay, we're gonna keep it simple and boring and start with engine coolant temperature, right? So that is 0005, which is this one right here. Okay, and that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's handy, right? Uh, this doesn't continue like this. It does break right here and stops following a pattern. I think it breaks before then in a few spots, but regardless, the first I don't know, 10 or 15 are all in order, so that's handy. So in our pointer array, we're gonna say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we are gonna name this ECT PID. Typically, I would say, you know, might be, or throw a question mark in there. Double click on that. Okay, this is a pretty dead giveaway. Whenever I find functions that are really small like this and have a param1 equals uvar, it typically means it typically means that it's a PID of some sort. So sometimes I'll start with the variable and track it to this function in order to find out where my PID table exists. Okay, but is what this function is doing right here is it's checking parameter one and then returning it effectively if it meets the conditions. So parameter one is this one right here. So we are gonna call this ECT PID. Okay, and there's only one thing that writes to it ECT PID UVAR1 and here's a table and that looks like engine coolant temperature to me so we're gonna go ahead and copy this right here 42 32 so it's gonna be 33 long if we remember from our last video so let's open up our oops alright so let's open up our hex dump and we're gonna enter this address hit accept, I'm gonna turn it into 32-bit float, high, low, okay. Column rows are gonna be 33, yep, to negative 40 right there, that looks good. 
We're gonna leave properties open really quick and we're gonna see how uvar1, right? So here's our ROM, but where are we getting our you know live data? So it's uvar1 here, okay? And that's from this function. And here is the ROM it's pulling it from. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that. Throw it in Winnells in the X axis, EEPROM and paste. And okay. Okay, this is interesting. Obviously the X axis of this map does need to end up getting scaled. Okay, we will notice that the RAM address, so we're gonna call this, this is gonna be engine coolant ECT and it should be voltage is my, is typically what it is. I haven't reversed this ECU or any of the other ones far enough to see if this is truly voltage coming in here or if maybe um, there's a chance that this, that this linearization is only used for the PID. So this could be a variant of actual engine coolant temperature that then it's conditioning it for the PID specifically. I'm not sure. Okay, this 0302 times this is interesting. We can try to multiply. No, it's not gonna get us where we need to be. Typically I see a zero through five volts here. So axis, yeah, that's not doing it. I'm not sure, we're not gonna get too caught up on this right now, it's not the point. Oh, this is used 25 times. Oh, here's something important, guys. Check this out. So we talked about this in the first video. Okay, so we need to take a break for a second. So we talked about this in the first video. I mentioned that we may have to make changes to our Gidra processor folder, and that's what we have right here. So we see this PUVAR2 plus, and then this negative value, and we're seeing it on repeat. So we look over here and we see that R13 is our culprit here. Okay, all of these are R14 and they look good. So we are going to close this all down. So we'll hit save. We have to close it all the way out and we are gonna go into GM videos, Gidra 11. We're gonna go into Gidra processors. Power PC data languages. And we're gonna select folder type and go to C spec and for this folder, it's going to be 6432 C-spec right here. Okay, scroll around to the this unaffected area. So in the first video, when we found that we needed to set register 15, and then we set 14 and 13 along with it, the issue we saw was unaf R15 plus a negative hex value. In this latest case in Ghidra, we saw a PU var whatever the heck, plus a negative hex address for the offset. The reason why R15 showed as UNAF is because it is in the unaffected portion of this code. So we're gonna go ahead and add uh, R13 to this, and that is going to fix our issue. Okay, and then make sure we close this and hit save or it doesn't apply changes. And you can edit this in like Notepad++, that's no problem. So let's head back to our Ghidra. We'll open and run the program again and see if it fixed it. All right, look at that. So there we have it. Uh, we have been fixed. These are our R13s down here, okay? We don't need to run the analysis again because we, you know, we set up R13, R14, and R15 all at the same time, and then we ran the analysis. So Ghidra knew the in the machine code or the assembly code that this data point was here. And you can rewind the video and see that 
prior to fixing the CSpec file, we still had accurate data here. It just wasn't showing it correctly in our decompiled view. So now that we've corrected the CSpec file, now our decompiled view shows it as it should. This video is dragging out pretty long at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it and that'll be the end of this video. But we will come back and start looking for our DTC functions. Uh, engine coolant temperature was a little odd. I, I, I don't typically see the X axis being uh, the values that we saw there. We'll probably do mass airflow and track it down to its DTCs in the next video. So, all right, thanks for watching. And if you're still here, hit the like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.